So, early on when making this channel, I told myself I would never insert frivolous sponsorships and ad reads into my videos for products that have nothing to do with said videos and probably don't mesh well with my target audience. And while this isn't a sponsorship deal, there is a new product I'm willing to shill on this channel because for once, it's something that does mesh with my target audience. Introducing MetaZoo a brand new collectible trading card game based around monsters and cryptids from mythology and folklore. They had a successful Kickstarter campaign a few months back that I managed to catch the very tail end of, making me backer number 211 out of 255. As an early backer and someone willing to make a video like this one, I also became one of a few to be sent early sample cards for review. As a little aside, the original sample pack sent out to me ended up getting lost in the mail, as such, the kind folks working for the game made it up to me by sending 10 sample packs, meaning I ended up receiving a total of 40 cards, 10 of which are holographics. And I'm still trying to process how I feel about this. Take this following video as my general reaction. This is not only the unboxing video for the sample cards I received, but also a sort of general overview for the game. Even glancing at the cards should tell you the art on display here is simply gorgeous. The hand-drawn watercolor aesthetic perfectly captures the nostalgic style seen in Ken Sugimori's artwork for Pokemon. And that's no joke, most of the graphics used were created by hand, not digitally, and you can really see the amount of time and care that goes into these. Unlike Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, which is heavily stylized for kids to remove all the blood and gore, MetaZoo doesn't shy away from any of that. Honestly, it would be pretty hard to, considering the subject matter we're working with here. But of course, it's nothing too over the top. Everything's filtered through the simple watercolor designs, and nothing feels too out of place. The cards themselves are made of good quality cardstock, and are, of course, the standard size for cards of this type. So, with the cards themselves out of the way, what exactly is the game even about? In the world of MetaZoo, there exists a plethora of magic in the form of sacred artifacts, monsters known as beasties, and casters who control them. Or, at least, this was the case until a sort of magic-blocking shield was put in place known as the Veil. This resulted in all the beasties being forced into hiding, and all the casters being relegated to fortune-telling and stage magic. Well, that is until, one day, 1,000 years to the day of its creation, the veil shattered, and all things once considered paranormal became the new normal. It's up to folks like you to take up the role of caster, using your newly discovered powers to cast spells, contract beasties to fight, and wield magic artifacts as you protect the world from newly emerging villains who wish to take over. The plot isn't too deep, of course. It's designed for virtually anyone to hop into the shoes of a caster and start playing in this fun new world, and I think it succeeds in this regard. This plot also gives the game a high degree of freedom with what monsters they can include. And for this game's first edition, Cryptid Nation, that means tons of monsters, cryptids, and urban legends from American folklore. Fans of my channel will be happy to learn that Bunny Man vs. Goat Man is a match they can now play out at home. With many other expansions on the horizon and ideas passed around for future editions such as Yokai Island or Fairy Isle, I'm confident many other Crypto Crossing matches will become possible in the future, too. One of the most important aspects to note about this game is not the theming or presentation of the game, but actually the unique way it plays. Looking at the other big three collectible card games, MetaZoo's creator knew he wanted to make this game stand out from the others, as well as fully capturing the weird and aberrant nature of the paranormal. To this end, MetaZoo features what is called fourth wall mechanics, rules attached to cards which tie into elements of the real world, be it the time, place, or even certain objects located around the playing area. Some cards might get a bonus for playing at night or during the day, or while it's raining out. Maybe there's a forest nearby or a bridge which will buff your Bigfoot or Bunny Man. Or hell, maybe the card requires you to go choo-choo before activating its special. Here's a quick example of this gameplay in action. Here we have the Popelik Goatman. He's a relatively powerful beastie, but his ultimate weakness is that he's forced to retreat if there's a train nearby. Imagine the chaos of when an unexpected train whistle echoes just loud enough for you to all hear. Or imagine the tension of knowing a train is expected to pass by at any minute, and you need to hold out until then. 
Imagine catching your opponent off guard by playing the ghost train to make them retreat. Or maybe you guys see a train on TV and have to debate with one another if that's cheating or if it qualifies. Seriously, the diversity and openness of these card mechanics are insane and make every game a truly unique experience. Even when using the same decks as before, simply deciding to play the game at a different time or place can make a radical difference. The only things I can possibly think to compare this to would be Shen Gong Wu from Shaolin Showdown, or Stands from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I've always wondered to myself how these things could be made to work in a tabletop game, and MetaZoo accomplishes this perfectly. This sort of mechanic may not be for everybody, but there's nothing stopping you from collecting the cards for their art or because you're into spooky stuff. And while I wouldn't be surprised if kids got in trouble at school for, I don't know, removing their pants because a card game told them to, it wouldn't be that unprecedented since kids have been getting in trouble for playing other games like Pokemon and similar for decades now. On a more personal note, since I've become an adult with a disposable income, I've gradually been getting back into hobbies and stuff that I was real into as a kid, but couldn't really explore due to being admittedly a bit poor. Like with many kids, one of these interests was collecting Pokemon cards, and recently I managed to get a hold of my original collection I had as a child. Anyway, getting back into a game like Pokemon, or really any big card game like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic, can be incredibly daunting with the sheer number of cards currently in circulation after so many years. You'd have to dish out a pretty penny if you really wanted to catch them all. As serendipity would have it, I stumbled upon MetaZoo at the perfect time then, able to start building up a collection while they're still new and getting ahead of the curve. Add in the fact that they cater even closer to my personal interests of cryptids and still manage to scratch that 90s nostalgia itch perfectly, I can't think of a better hobby to be getting into right now. Well, for me anyway, there's probably some of you out there who could care less, even after watching this far into the video. Going even deeper, I think the reason MetaZoo resonates with me so personally, enough to make this video as long as it is, is because it's exactly the kind of game I wanted to make myself when I was back in middle school and early high school. I would stay up late listening to paranormal podcasts and drawing up my own sort of fan-made Pokédex based on cryptids and mythical beings. Obviously, I've since found a more productive outlet for this interest in the form of my channel here, but my love for the idea is still very strong. Seeing MetaZoo accomplish this is fantastic, and I would like nothing more than to see them succeed and become popular as one of the next big collectible card games. So, that's MetaZoo, a cool new trading card game with a cool premise, high production quality, fun and creative gameplay, and immense room to grow as they add new sets and themes over the years. If this video has caught anybody's interest, then I highly recommend heading over to MetaZoo.com and ordering some cards for yourself you won't be disappointed. This has been Zenonaki, and I thank you all for watching.